So in today's video, I'm going to show you a simple and versatile technique for creating map path animations inside of Adobe After Effects. And I won't be using any premium templates or any premium plugins. So for the first step, I want to gather up a few graphic elements. I have two pieces of vector artwork here. I have an airplane and I have a world map. I got both of these from a website called Envato Elements. It's a huge library of um, digital assets that you, if you sign up for like a monthly subscription, you can get unlimited downloads, which is really cool. If you wanna check that out, follow my affiliate link in the video description. However, if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial uh, for free, you can go get a world map from websites like freevectormaps.com, and you can find probably an airplane icon over at iconfinder.com. I want to have an animation here that's showing like one of those round the world trips where it stops at like a few different locations in big cities in different countries. So one of the first things I want to do here is create the little map markers for each location. So I'm going to go grab the shape tool and make sure that ellipse is selected. And I'm going to set my fill. So I've already got everything set up here. I've got the fill set to solid color and I've got the stroke set to none. Now I'm just going to click and drag and hold the shift key to draw out a small ellipse and I'm gonna solo this so I can see it and I'm gonna open up the group here and see if I can tweak a few things let's just change the size to maybe 30 pixels and I'm gonna set the position and the transformation properties of the shape element to zero and that's gonna put it right in the middle of our composition and now since I'm gonna have four locations I'll quickly duplicate this three times and now I just need to figure out where I want these locations to be so let's say the first stop will be the United States Second stop will be England, third stop will be Thailand, and fourth stop will be Australia. Now I'll unsolo all these. Now I'm just going to kind of eyeball and put these in. So I'll turn off the airplane. So let's go over here. I'll grab the US marker. I'll just put it over here. Now I'll grab England. And then we have Thailand. And then we can head over somewhere in Australia. Now real quickly, I'm going to go over to the world map, hit T, and just lower the opacity just a bit. And you know what, I'm just gonna grab all these, type in size, and I want, I want all of these to go down a little bit. So let's change them to maybe 20 or 25. That's better. All right, now I wanna create a path. I'm going to go grab my pen tool, I'm going to turn the fill to none, and I'm going to set the stroke to solid color, and I think white is fine with a 10 pixel width, that's looking just fine. Maybe I can create a loop here of the plane flying into the screen and then going to all the locations and flying out the other side. So for that, I'm going to start off over here, and then I'm just going to kind of loosely draw this, and I'm not going to create any Bezier curves just yet, I'm just going to draw straight linear points. But I want to make sure I have an actual vertices or point at each specific location and I'll show you why in just a second. I'm going to go down and rename this shape layer path and maybe I'll change the label to a different color just to keep things a little bit more organized. And actually let's turn the width down to 5. So I have my map markers of my locations, I have my path now, I have my airplane icon. I just need to connect it all together and make it tight, more precise, and just rig everything up so that everything's connected. And I'm gonna do that using the create nulls from path script. So under window, if I go down, there's a script down here that says create nulls from paths. Now this is only available in After Effects version. I don't know the version, but it came out in 2018 and was introduced. So if you're using an older version of After Effects, you might not see this, so you'll need to update. Click on this, this will launch the panel. And what this is going to allow me to do is change all of those points, not change, it's going to add connections to null layers from all of the points, which is going to give us really good control over those points. To create those, I need to grab the actual path of the shape layer. I can't just grab the shape layer. See, if I grab path and I click on points from nulls, it says error, no path selected. So I have to dive down and grab the actual path. A quick way to do that is just to use the search bar again and type in path, and now I can grab the actual path. Again, grab the actual path, not just the subgroup. And you can see it's selected in here. And now watch what happens. I'm going to do points follow nulls. And now it's created all these null layers here. Check out how cool this is. Now if I grab one of these null, it's going to move my path around. So now I have really tight and precise control over this path. And once again, to keep things organized, I'm going to go ahead and rename all these null layers. 
My path is connected to my null layers. Now I want to connect all of the map markers there as well. And that's really simple. All I need to do is go to each shape layer here and then pick whip and parent it to the null layer. But when I do it, I need to hold the shift key. And the reason I hold the shift key is that so it'll automatically place it in the perfect position. And just for visual purposes, I'm going to grab the US map marker and bring it completely off the, the specific site of the point there. And now you'll see when I go to the shape layer here and grab the pick whip, hold the shift key and then release over the US point, it's going to snap directly to that point. And now when I grab the null layer, look what happens. So I'll just repeat this step for all of these. One other added benefit of this is this gives me scale control over these map markers as well. So now if I scale up this null layer, it's going to scale up that marker. So I'll have scale controls not only on the shape layer element, but then the secondary controls on all these null layers. Now everything's really rigged up with the path and the locations. Uh, and now I want to bring my airplane and connect it to that path. And I'm going to do that using the trace path of this script. So I'm going to go back to the path here, search for path again, and I'm going to grab it and I'm going to click on trace path. And what that does is that places a null layer along the path, animates it along the path and loops it. Now as I scrub along here, watch. Now I don't want this to loop. I just want it to animate one time. So if you see what's going on here, I'm going to go to this trace path. I'm going to hit the U key to bring up keyframes and you can see there's a little progress bar or a progress effect with two keyframes. And this is uh, essentially what's going on here. It animates on once and then it loops. So to turn the loop off, I can go up to the effect controls panel and then right here there's a loop checkbox. So I turn that off and now it will only animate on once and then stop. So now I can just adjust this keyframe as needed. I'm going to drag that all the way to the end because this is a five second animation and now you'll see it animates over the course of five seconds. So now I'm sure you know what I can do here. I can grab the airplane, bring this over here. I'm going to turn it back on. And what I want to do now is I'm going to pick whip this, shift parent that to this. All right, now we got something going on here. It looks absolutely horrible, but our airplane is now following that path. And not only that, it's automatically orienting, but and it's doing that because it's a, doing that via the rotation of our null layer, which is cool. Now all I really need to do is make some fine tune adjustments here and then I can animate. So first I'm going to focus on this airplane here. So I'm going to scale it way down, maybe something like 15. And now I'm going to look at the path and I want to change all of the path points or the vert vertices to Bezier's, to Bezier curves because right now they're just linear. So I'm going to close the create nulls from paths. Now let me zoom in. There might be an easier way to do this, but I'm going to dive down to path and I'm going to open up the path and I'm just going to quickly deactivate the expression here because I don't want that messing with this and I'm going to go grab the convert vertex tool which is under the pen tool and now I can really zoom in and with the path selected I can quickly convert these and that's going to give me these handles and I'm going to hold shift just to give this smooth it out a little bit more and now I can do that to each point so that it's not so you know linear. And you know, ideally, I probably should have done this when I drew out the path. I probably should have added those Bezier curves right away, but hey. All right, that's looking very cool. Now I'm going to focus on the path down here. First, I'm going to open up the contents and the shape group. Let's open up the stroke. Now this I can tweak a bunch of different ways to give us a different look. Um, what I want to do is I want to add some dashes. So right here, I can hit this plus key and then I can hit the plus key again, and that's gonna add a dash parameter as well as a gap parameter. And you know what, let's just go ahead and leave it at the defaults that we've got here. It's not looking that bad. Now I want the airplane to really reveal the path, so it gives it like a more dynamic look. For that, I'm gonna add an animator. So I can go up here to the add button and select trim paths, and what this is gonna do is this gives us the start, end, and offset parameters, and if I zoom back out here, you can see as I bring the end down, you're going to see that that trims the end path there. So how do I get that to lock with the timing of my plane flying? So all I need to do is first animate this. We'll go from 0 to 100. And then I simply need to match those keyframes up with the keyframes of my trace path, which is just above it. So I'm actually going to select both of these and hit the U key to isolate those keyframes. And now what I can do, 
I can time these up, make sure they're aligned. And now voila, look at that. Now it's important that whatever I do to one set of keyframes, I do to the other so that these two animations will stay aligned. And you know what, I'm gonna come in a little bit closer and I think I actually wanna move the airplane a little bit because I can see a little bit of the path here. So for that, I can just grab the airplane uh, and go to anchor point and I can kind of tweak the anchor point just a bit. And if I want, um, depending on how that's turning, yeah, if I want it to pivot further on the back, I can move the X position of the anchor point as well so that when it makes those turns, it's not gonna be right in the middle. Now I wanna animate these locations on. I wanna have them animate on after the plane passes over. That's really simple. That's as simple as applying these scale animations to the shape layers. And once again, it's important that I animate the shape layers so then I have the further um, versatility of changing those scales uh, with the null layers that they're attached to. So let's go here and I'll animate these all at the same time to be more efficient. And these will animate on something like half a second. So I'm gonna grab all those layers, press S for scale, and we'll go from 100 uh, down to zero. Now I can close these back up. Now it's just a matter of timing these, so. And what's so cool about this rig now is I can just go down here and let's say I want these markers to be larger, I can grab the scale attribute here and I can scale them all up. And it's gonna retain the animation in, it's not gonna um, scale them up right here, but it'll scale them up like relatively so that now when they scale up, they're all gonna be a little bit bigger. Also, let's say I wanna change the itinerary. Let's say I wanna go to New York instead. Let's go somewhere up. I'm gonna loosely put these on the map. And we wanna go to Italy and we want to go to India instead of Thailand. And we want to go to New Zealand instead of Australia. Don't really start any fights here. Now I can, just like that, super simple, super versatile. All right, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to see more cool tutorials like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. I'll see you in the next one.